Katie Cunningham, and I'm very excited to be here today. I actually want to give a shout out to Joel. I really only pitched because I followed him on Twitter, and he talked about pitching his community speaking job, and now I'm here today to speak for you at my first MozCon ever. Um, I'm here to talk on an, building an intent-based SEO campaign for any business. I am currently the SEO manager at Adept Marketing, which most of you have probably never heard of. We're a digital agency within Columbus, Ohio. And for one, those of you that don't know, oh, we are currently a ways away from Ohio right now. <laughs> you may have heard of us for Cornfields or LeBron James or a state that's important come election season. Promise you we're a lot more than that. One of my clients is actually the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. You may have heard of the University of the Ohio State University. They're kind of good at football sometimes. We've been <laughs> working with them for about three years now to give a context of how big they are. They have over 102 locations, a lot of them multi-service or hospitals, um, over 1,500 physicians, and treat over 450 plus conditions just listed on the website. What I'm getting at here is it is huge, and marketing is hard, especially in healthcare. There's, there's a lot of nuances to it, and especially helping with SEO. We've been working with them for th three years with kind of a general um, market goal of improving market share. But as marketers, we know we can't influence that very well. There's no measurement, there's no focus. So we started working with departments. How can we drive more patient appointments for a specific department within the healthcare organization? We're getting there, but it still was, you know, if you're telling me what to do for sports medicine, that's a big department. We had to get more focused with something like a campaign. For example, drive 20 more appointments a month for LASIK. We can understand that. They might build a paid campaign around it, email campaign, um, put new content up. But how they came to us wanting to know how to do SEO. How would they, they don't want to, they don't want an unlimited budget. They can't always pay to be first position. They want to know how can they take advantage of SEO to do this in a you know, cash friendly way. So we had to come up with a process to support something like this. Um, and that came down to intent. We can't rank for every LASIK term in the world. The Mayo Clinics, the um, WebMDs, even Google owns the kind of dictionary terms of healthcare. We have to find the user intent that might turn someone into a patient. And that all starts with the user journey. LASIK is simple to understand. It's someone being proactive and going through a healthcare scenario that they are deciding to go through. Still map out all the, the steps that they're going to go through. I'm actually going through this right now. I'm in the, do I really want to put a laser on my eye in a few weeks stage? Uh, but it's not all healthcare scenarios are straightforward like this. This is a little bit more like buying a car or something like that. A lot of them are not straightforward. You might be healthy one day and find out you're sick now, you have to get a referral to a specialist, you might have to get surgery, a treatment plan, all these different steps. But each one of those steps still is the opportunity for someone to be searching online and you can be showing your content. It just changes what the intent looks like. We had to build a process that could be applied to a proactive healthcare scenario or a reactive one. It had to be a framework that could be applied, you know, regardless of what that user journey might look like taking something very complex and making it simple. You've probably seen this something like this before. Every agency has it on their website, kind of an SEO framework. Um, but what I did was turn this into a very specific template and process um, that applies the framework of finding intent within this entire process. It will take you from goals to audit to research to strategy, how to execute and how to measure. So you can build your own intent-based framework for your business um, at, and I'm gonna give away that template for free at the end of this. But first, I'm gonna walk through how you actually do it. Each one of these next steps will kind of correlate with a slide or a tab in the Google Sheet template that I'm gonna go away or give away for you guys to go apply for your own business. At the start of a campaign, you'll want to document all your goals. We, this is what we use for the healthcare campaigns when they generally have kind of, you know, paid and all that stuff behind there. We need to be in the loop of what that campaign might look like, what the target audience is, and what their target user journey, what are the touch points. LASIK, you can understand. You can identify, all right, someone's make a consultation, they're gonna get their surgery, they need post-surgery care. Aortic valve replacement surgeries are not that straightforward. I can't help market it unless I understand and all this information might come from the doctors or different stakeholders within their organization. So build kind of a template that, or a questionnaire that you can get in front of different stakeholders' eyes so you can get the information you need to build your campaign. 
the goals and um, landing page data is kind of self-explanatory, but you want to make sure you document what goals you're going to track, what KPIs, what's the value of those KPIs, and what pages you're going to be targeting them on. The Wexner's website is huge. The, they only ha might have a few pages on LASIK. We should document that here and then start performing our content on it. Kind of audit what current state we're at right now. What current content do we have? We might have a page on LASIK services, might have it on um, are you a candidate for LASIK, a few blog posts here and there. See what you have right now and how is it performing? Where is it getting traffic? How can you improve it? And what content do people actually want? You'll identify that a lot in the user journey. Next. Oh. Perform um, keyword research to identify modifiers. I'm not here to tell you how to do keyword research, but I am here to tell you that you need to find the intent-based modifiers that you might be adding to LASIK to make it more of an intent-based search. Adding something like best LASIK makes it, you know, someone's looking for the best LASIK doctors around them. They might be looking for the best laser eye surgery. There's actually different types. I start by doing, putting my seed keywords within a tool like SEMrush or Moz and bucketing out what common terms I'm seeing. Find keyword frequency, find those different modifiers that are also unique to your business that you know that might not actually be up there. I like to turn something like this into a pivot table so I can see modifier groups, how much search volume there is, um, where we're ranking right now. It kind of gives you an idea of what opportunity you can be focusing on. Next, map them to the intent stages. If you do not know much about the different intent stages, I would recommend going and reading everything on STAT's website. Um, they have done a great research, amount of research on intent. Um, for healthcare, we don't focus too much on informational and commercial, mainly because informational is owned by WebMD and Mayo Clinic and Google. Um, but there is opportunity to do long tail keywords and focus on the questions people are asking. That's a big long-term play of content that we could be building. Commercial might be people researching third-party websites and we have to do reputation management or reviews. It might not be an SEO play necessarily. We always focus, at least for healthcare, on local navigating and transactional. Um, we mainly focus on all of these because locally, no one's gonna travel three states away for LASIK. We don't need to rank nationally for that. We, want, we care about how we rank locally within our own market. Um, I actually have a blog post on our um, ADEPTS website that you guys can download an Excel template where you input each one of your own business keywords that will be different than mine in here and every service line that I do will be slightly different. You can input them in one tab and on the next put all your keyword research and it will automatically bucket the, the different um, keywords into what intent stage they are. So you can start seeing what are those high intent keywords that you should be targeting. For example, if I add surgery to LASIK, okay, someone might be trying to get LASIK surgery or they just might want to know what LASIK surgery is. If I then add in near me on top of it, that has just became a very high intent based keyword. We want to rank in any market that we have a location in for that. Once you find those high intent modifiers, map out your keyword list even more. You might have to adjust and create terms that necessarily don't have search volume, but they have high intent, so you want to make sure you're able to rank for them. In the scenario of added near me to a different variety of keywords that we might not have search volume for, but we would still want to make sure we own within the market. Once you have your prioritized list of keywords, you've mapped out all your different modifiers, map each keyword to the target URL you want to rank. In this scenario, for a near me search, we'd probably want a localized kind of service page um, or even the location that does LASIK within their area. And then map each keyword to the specific appointment or KPIs. It might be an appointment request. It might be click to call. For a local, it might be a local pack. We will, uh, it will be different depending on the types of intent that you see. If we're building content or blog posts, it might be engagement. It might just be people, um, you know, the rankings that we see for those um, terms if we show up in the answer boxes or anything like that. All your KPIs will tell you what to set up tracking for. Always make sure you have the goal set up. With each one of these campaigns, there's different goals that might be added to the website. Make sure you're able to track it. I like to build out custom segments so I can easily report on all the pages that have LASIK in it so I don't have to keep going into analytics and filtering multiple times. It makes reporting a lot easier. For a localized search, Google My Business, as bad as the data can be sometimes, are incorrect. 
we still need to focus on using that um, to see are people clicking to call, are they getting directions, are they getting the information they need and just not going to the website. And then we set up keyword tracking. We do this to gather universal result data. It's a huge piece of intent-based search that Google changes what type of SERP features it's showing based off the intent it's assuming. Our biggest ones to focus on are generally are the local pack, because people are searching locally for a lot of these treatments, or the answer boxes, and people also ask. There's other forms. You could build you know, videos or anything like that. It will depend on your market, and it will depend on what intent you're focusing on. My favorite to do this for is using stat search analytics. They're great for a large data set. As a hospital, we have to track in different areas of the city for every location they have. So we can track LASIK near me in different areas um, using different zip codes. And then we can do mobile versus desktop and really dig into the data and what our competitors are doing and what opportunities we can leverage. Moz, if you're a smaller client, is a great idea. Um, we use it for kind of one location dentists or something like that. Um, you're able to still get that kind of universal result data, just not as in big of a data set. Once you have that, you've done all your research, build out an action plan. This is just an example of a very basic action plan that could be something that might need to be done at some point. If we are focusing on those local terms, we might need to improve local rankings, we might need to work on local listings, but there's a dependency on resource availability. Prioritize your action plan based off the impact and level of effort and what you're able to accomplish. As a consultant, I know that my client generally doesn't have the resources they need right away for something like this, so we might prioritize something lower level of effort that has a high impact and then revisit it down the road when we're able to have resources to support it. If you're working in-house, you'll probably go and start implementing on your action plan. As a consultant, you have to turn that action plan into something your client will understand, get on the same page, and want to implement. I do this by delivering the strategy within a strategic document, just kind of a Word document that recaps everything we did. If you're um, delivering this to a client, they, your document might move past your point of contact, so you need to include an executive summary, recap of everything you did, what the current state analysis you saw, and where you saw opportunities, strategy to get there, so that they know why you got to that conclusion and they don't have questions. Always include very specific recommendations and tactics for your client to go implement, otherwise they won't do it. If you give someone a very vague recommendation and they have tons of other things going on, they are not going to make that a priority. So spell it out as much as you possibly can. Um, do it with process documents. For content, we use a recommendations document that pulls out all the current content from a page into a Word document, crosses out what we want them to change, highlight what we want them to put in, and give it back to them and document when we changed the, made those optimizations. Makes it very easy for your client to be able to go into the CMS and know what to change, and they don't have to question what you're doing. Next, build a KPI-driven automated report. All those goals you documented throughout the process, that's gonna go into this report. Um, don't make it more complex than it needs to be. Stress on that. <laughs> you need to build a report that pulls out the KPIs they care about, makes them easily understand it, see the trends, and see how content is performing. On the flip side of that, I generally try to build out a report that gives more detail for me, so if they ask questions, I have insights and I don't have to pull that data for myself. I make this a report that is automated and can be sent to them every month so we don't have to keep spending time reporting. Clients don't really enjoy when you spend 10 hours pulling reports every month instead of doing strategy for them. So I, we use Supermetrics or a variety of Google Data Studio if we just need Google Data and trust it if it's working correctly, which sometimes it does not, FYI. Um, and BlockSpring is kind of an alternative to Supermetrics if you're interested in a different tool. So you've done all the work, you've executed, you're reporting on it, rinse and repeat. You might need to revisit and tweak your strategy as you're going, or you're gonna take that entire framework, go through that entire process, and apply it to a completely different user journey. I might move from doing LASIK for a month to doing deep brain stimulation the next day. It's really fun. <laughs> but I want you to be able to take this and apply it to your own business. So I'm giving away this entire template that we use. It's from start to finish, walk through the tabs. Um, there's, a little, there's more detail in here. I didn't want to stand up here and walk through a Google Sheet. Uh, but you can get it at um, 
resources.adeptmarketing.com slash SEO campaign. I'm gonna tweet it out after this as well. Make a copy, ask me any questions that you have. And I just want to leave with this isn't just for healthcare. I just used a very intense healthcare scenario because healthcare is complex. I use the same framework for all industries. My e-commerce clients, if they have a specific product they want to focus on, I use the same process to find what keyword opportunities we have based off user intent. If you are doing B2B, still do the same thing. Map out your user journey, find those opportunities. I want you to be able to build a strategy that works for your own business, use, utilizing my template as a framework, but tweak it for what works for you. Keep the processes and the framework and the idea of focusing on intent as your main goal. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys all have a great rest of the MozCon.